Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our worship time this morning. Uh, the last thing anybody wants to see when it is time to worship is me. That is absolutely the truth. My singing is not great. And honestly, I don't always enjoy singing very much. Uh, worshiping through song has just always been kind of hard for me. There's exceptions, but most of the time, I just kind of sit there and feel like I'm not doing a very good job. I know the passage about making a joyful noise, and I, I, I totally get it. And I know that God is pleased when we worship, and not necessarily how good a job we do at worshiping. But I think that we need to remember that worship, as the Bible talks about it, involves so much more than just singing. In fact, the Bible describes our whole lives as worship. So most things that we do can be done to God's glory as a part of worship. So this morning is our attempt at trying out a new way of worshiping with you and the church. I think that the pandemic has taught us that we really need those different ways of worshiping right now. Big crowds full of people singing, just they don't work right now. And, and please hear me out. None of this is a criticism of Kenda Nelson and the rest of her team of worship leaders, not at all. I don't think you all realize how hard it is to sing to a room full of nothing but cameras. The, the worship teams, they've all made this shift from in-person to in-camera worship, and we all owe them our thanks. So please don't see anything that we're doing this morning as a slight to them at all. In fact, I, I think they could probably just use a break this week. When we were overseas, we had a group come visit us for the simple purpose of leading our team in a spiritual retreat. So we went to this small farmhouse in the country and we learned about a kind of scripture reading called Lectio Divina. Now, Lectio Divina literally means divine reading. Some of the early church fathers taught Lectio Divina around the fourth century. So it's a really old practice that is kind of experiencing a little bit of a revival lately. A lot of our Bible colleges and seminaries are teaching this to their students. And it's kind of a way of taking God's word and then using it to lead us in prayer and meditation. So for me, Lectio Divina is a way to force me to slow way down when I read the Bible and meditate on God's word. And some of what we're gonna do this morning is gonna seem really slow. And you're probably gonna feel your mind kind of start to wander, but don't stress out. Just refocus yourself to the task at hand. Some of what we're gonna do is gonna seem uncomfortable just because it's new. You've never done it before. The first time I did it, I felt like a kid in children's church who has the giggles and can't stop. So we are gonna guide you through the four steps. There's four steps that we're gonna do for our Lectio Divina. And these four steps are going to be our worship service today. This is what we're doing. We're gonna explain everything all at once to kind of give you sort of an overview of what's gonna happen. And then we're going to go through the steps one at a time with breaks in between for you to do your part. You're probably going to want to have a physical Bible with you rather than one on your phone. Uh, the room that you're in needs to be as distraction-free as possible. That is tough in our house with uh, kids. Uh, but as distraction-free as possible is going to be the best. And the passage that we're all going to be meditating on together is going to be Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. And I'm kind of excited about that because that's the passage that Sherman's going to be preaching on today. So we're all going to have really studied the passage before Sherm even gets to it. I think it's going to be a really good thing for us. So here's how Electio Divina works. Step one is to choose a passage, which we've already done, and to read it. But don't read it like it's a novel or your Instagram feed. Uh, read it really slowly, more slowly than you've ever read anything before. Uh, look at every word and every phrase. Listen for anything that jumps out at you. Now, intellectual thoughts about original languages or historical context are fine, don't get me wrong, but try also and notice how the passage that we're reading makes you feel. Now, that is difficult. Those of us who are used to approaching God's word from kind of an intellectual way, this is gonna be tough. But remember, and I think this is really important, it's a lesson that I had to learn as well, God asks us to love him with our hearts and our minds, both of those together. 
So what we might do during step one is ima- like picture ourselves inside the passage, either as the person that is being spoken to or someone in the crowd that's watching. All right. Now, step two is to meditate. So what we're going to do is you're going to read the passage again. And you're going to read it just as slowly as the first time. And pay attention to anything that might have jumped out at you. So you could underline or circle that word or passage. If you want, you can have a notebook with you. You can journal something, write it down, anything that God is showing you. So you just ask God to show you why he caused that part of scripture to jump out at you. What do you think he might be trying to tell you? Um, More than just reading, this step involves thinking deeply about the passage. What lessons are there to learn? What details are there that you've never noticed before? Okay. After we're done with that, we're going to move on to step three, which is to pray. We're going to read the passage again, slowly as ever. Uh, But this time we're going to borrow words that we find in that passage and make them our own prayer. So, in other words, if the passage happens to be centered on God's forgiveness, then we're going to use the words in that passage that talk about forgiveness and kind of borrow them and make them our own prayer. Part B of this step, there's kind of two parts to this step, is to sit in silence and let God speak back to us. And this is the part that I that I struggle with the most. Uh, a lot of times I feel like when it's time to pray, I have to fill up all the space that I have with words. And I forget that part of prayer is stopping and listening and allowing God to speak back to me. That's right. And so step four we're going to do is to contemplate. Uh, Read it again. Listen to the words. And imagine the God of the universe writing them down just for you to read them. Picture this passage as though it is in the Bible just for you and that God had you in mind when he wrote it. Continue in silence for a while and allow God to speak. Now, I know that probably some of you are totally weirded out right now, and you are wondering what on earth are we about to do. But let me ask you to do me a favor. Just relax. It's going to be okay. This is going to be new to you. Most new things feel a little uncomfortable at first. If you're with your family, you might hear some giggling from the kids. Um, as much as possible, get into an environment where there are no distractions. I'm certainly not saying kick the kids out. I want them to be a part of this. You parents can kind of guide your kids through this process. But what is most important is we all need to expect that God is about to speak to us in the next few minutes by going through this simple exercise called Lectio Divina. So everybody, I'm going to pause just for a second. Make sure you have your Bible and uh, we're going to get started. Okay, so we're about to start our very first Lectio Divina together as a church. Remember that step one is read. I'm going to read the passage out loud, and I'm going to read it slowly. And all that we're going to do together is simply note things that stick out to you, uh, passages that leap off the page. And then pay special attention to how you feel when you hear this passage read. And then we're going to pause the recording, and you're going to do the same thing on your own. Remember, I'm reading from uh, the English Standard Version. Uh, Your version of the Bible may be just a little bit different. It doesn't matter. We're just picking this version because that's the one that Sherm is preaching from today. So I'm going to read Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19 in the English Standard Version. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Now we're going to pause. We're going to put a timer up on the screen. And you read the passage once or maybe even twice, highlighting anything that jumps out at you and paying special attention to how you feel when you read this passage.
All right, step two this time is to meditate. So just read the passage again, read it really slowly, pay attention to anything that might be jumping out at you. Um, you can underline, you can circle a word, you can write something out of the passage, you can use um, a journal, but just meditate on the word. Ask God to show you why he caused something to jump out at you, what he might be trying to tell you, um, and just kind of think deeply about this passage. Think about what lesson there might be to learn or what details you had never noticed before.
Okay, step three of Lectio Divina is prayer. So we're going to pause here in a second and ask you to just read the passage again, just as slowly. But this time, we're going to borrow some of the words that we find in the passage and make them our own prayer. For example, this passage uh, kind of centers on thankfulness. So use the words that we find written in this passage uh, to talk about thankfulness and make it your own prayer. Uh, part of this step is also to sit in silence and allow God a moment to speak back to you. You may not feel a voice from heaven. Uh, you may not feel anything at all, but I think it's important to get into the habit of just sitting in silence and allowing God the opportunity to speak. So step three, read this passage and make it your own prayer. Okay, so after your prayer time, this is your last step to contemplate. Read it again, listen to the words, imagine the God of the universe. I wrote them down just for you to read them today. Picture this passage as though it's in the Bible just for you and that God had you in mind when he wrote it. So just contemplate. Sit in silence for just a couple more minutes and allow God to speak to you.
Okay, so it's time to kind of wrap things up. You did it. We did it. Yay. You did it. And uh, if you know me, I, I love this kind of stuff. Um, I just enjoy, especially in the mornings, spending some time in God's Word, um, all alone in the quiet, and just reading, not read to check it off a list, not read to just say, oh, it's done, I, I've done my Bible reading or my devotion for the day, but to really, really meditate on God's Word. I love using something like this. It has helped me for a long time now um, to really meditate. Thank you for sharing in this really special worship time with us. And I just pray my prayer is that you can continue this in your daily walk with God. Okay, I'm going to pray. And then we are going to move on with the rest of the service. Thank you, Father, for the privilege that it is to try new things. Well, they're not new things. They're old things. This is something that uh, the church has been doing for literally centuries. And it's kind of cool to be a part of of that ancient practice. Father, help us to be better at thinking deeply about your word and the impact that it has on our lives. Father, help us to put the things that you have prompted us today, put those things into practice. And Father, may we as a church uh, do a better job of just drinking from your word. We thank you for the privilege that it is to be able to pause on this Sunday and go through this practice together as a church. I pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen.